wow, wow, wow. How good was that? Can we put our hands together again for those worship band leaders for guiding us this morning? Wow. Well, kids, it's great to be able to share God's Word with you this morning. Really excited. In fact, right at the start, I think it would be great, church, that if we could um, let our kids know here this morning how much we value them, how much we are for them and with them, can we give all of our kids a big, massive cheer and encouragement this morning? We love you guys. We think you're amazing. And I think it would be a great opportunity as well just to thank our incredible Bridge Kids leaders. We are so blessed, church, every week with the teams of people who help for Pastor Trish, Ty, Emily, Katie Goopy, who does our junior buzz as well, all of our hundreds of volunteers. Can we give them a massive cheer and thank you for the incredible work they do? We are so blessed, really blessed. Well, this morning I'm sharing a, something from God's Word for you kids, but it's not just for kids, this is for everyone here, for you adults as well. So I want you to tune in, I want you to open your heart to God's Word this morning. And this morning I want to share a passage from the Bible about a man named Peter whose life was completely transformed when he met Jesus. He discovered what it means to be forgiven, what it means to have eternal life in Jesus. And when he discovered this truth, he wanted to tell everyone he knew about this truth. And uh, the Bible story we're going to look at this morning is actually found in Matthew chapter 14. You might want to follow along in your Bibles. Uh, It'll come up on the screen behind as well. But we need some helpers because we're going to act this story out so that we can remember it well. And uh, you know who I think are always very good helpers when we come to act out Bible stories? And that is our pastors. Don't they do a great job helping us to act out the Bible story? So our pastors are going to help us. And I think Trish, Ty, and Emily are going to help as well because we might need a few kids to help us out as well. Um, So I'm going to let them organize that, some helpers for us this morning as well. And while they are getting ready, I want to show you this brief video clip about Peter's life so you can get a little snapshot of him while we're getting ready. Why don't we go to the screens? This is a little bit about who Peter was. God's story. Peter. So part of God's story is about a guy named Peter, and it goes like this. Peter, who was also called Simon, lived in Capernaum, where he worked as a fisherman. One day, Jesus came up and told him to go into deep water to fish. When Peter obeyed Jesus, he caught so many fish that his boat began to sink. Peter fell at Jesus' feet with amazement. Then Jesus said, from now on, you will be catching men. Basically, now that Peter followed Jesus, he could help other people follow Jesus too. After that, Peter and the disciples followed Jesus everywhere. They got to see miracles, hear about the kingdom of heaven, and see what God was like by spending time with his son. Peter was there when Jesus was killed, when he came back to life, and when he rose straight up into the sky into heaven. Jesus gave Peter and the other disciples a special message before he left. He said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. It's actually a message for all Jesus' followers, which means you and me. Peter and the others who believed in Jesus took care of each other and people in need. Every day, new people saw the way they loved each other and chose to follow Jesus and be part of God's family too. And no matter what happened, Even when life got hard, the disciples kept following Jesus. And because they bravely told more and more people about Jesus, we get to know about Jesus and follow him today. And that's the story of Peter. Well, there you go. That's the story of Peter. Peter Peter was a person of bold and courageous faith, but even Peter got scared at times. And the story we're going to look at uh, today is about when Peter did get a little bit scared and he was not sure if he could really trust God. So I want to read you this story, and we are going to act it out a little bit. Now, um, you guys might want to move forward a little bit more towards the front. Don't fall off the front of the stage, but move forward a little bit. And I'm going to read this story, and as I do, uh, we're going to act this out, okay? So we get hold of it. Here we go, from Matthew chapter 14. It says, Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. While he sent the people home, uh, here are our disciples in the boat. I'm going to come over on this side, actually, in fact. I think it might be safer to come over here. Um, here come our disciples in the boat, coming over. Uh, oh, oh, uh, we're having a little bit of trouble here. Um, 
safely coming out. Here come the disciples in the boat, paddling. They were oars, no motors back then, uh, lots of paddling. And here they are in front of the boat. Fantastic. Very good, very good. I think that's not bad right there. I think that's a pretty good spot right there. Well done, disciples. Good job. Just encourage the disciples. They've done a good job there coming out in the boat. It says this. It says, meanwhile, um, we're still getting a few little things in place here, but um, while they're doing that, I'll keep reading. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen. Now, kids, we need a wind this morning. Um, So kids down the front, you can help me as well. On the count of three, we're going to create a wind. We are going to blow really hard, okay, to create a wind up here. Are you ready? Do you think you can do that on the count of three? I want you to blow as hard as you can up here to create a wind for the disciples. Are you ready? On the count of three, you ready? One, two, actually, stop. Um, I just remembered again, it's flu season. We don't want to spread flu around at this time of year. So instead of blowing, just, just wave your hands really hard. Can you do that? Perfect. Adults, you help as well. On the count of three, one, two, three, big wind is coming up against them. They were fighting heavy waves, heavy waves, very good. Okay, you can stop the wind, stop the wind. Good job, good job. I could feel that up here. Okay. (laughs) At about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Where is Jesus? Oh, here is Jesus. He's coming out towards them, walking on the water. Come out, Jesus, around the side here, up on the... uh, up on the water up here is great. As you can tell, we haven't rehearsed this, in case you're wondering. This is fresh right now. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Uh, That's good. That's good. Well done. Well done. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him. Oh, by the way, Pastor Peter, you're Peter in this story. I should have told you that before. (laughs) Should have told you that. Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked, careful, walked (laughs) on the water toward Jesus. Here he is. He's walking on the water. Wow, how amazing is that? That is incredible. But... But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. (laughs) Save me, Lord, he shouted. Save me, Lord. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Wow, 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 wow. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, you've got to climb back into the boat carefully. When they climbed back into the boat, Jesus as well, you climb in this time. Is there space in there for you? Climb in. When they got back into the boat, the wind stopped. (laughs) The wind stopped and, this is important, then the disciples worshipped him saying, you really are the son of God. Fantastic. Great story. Great story. Well done. Thank you, kids. Thank you, disciples. You can go back down. Might be easier to climb out than to push you back off, I think. I don't know. Might be the easiest to get out of there um, as safe as you can. Is fantastic. Wow, what an incredible story. Earlier in the service, in that connect time, we were talking about things that we were afraid of. I looked up online, did some research, and found the top things people are afraid of. Here are a few of them. The first is fear of heights. Anyone here afraid of heights? Put your hand up. Quite a few. Yep, I'm pretty afraid of heights. That's me. Another one that people are afraid of is fear of snakes. Is anyone here afraid of snakes? That one up there says that moment when you realize you're scared of snakes. That is a scary moment when you realize that. Here's another one. A lot of people are afraid of spiders. Anyone here afraid of spiders? I love that. I love that. When you realize you're trying to kill a spider and you realize you missed and can't find it. That is a scary moment, isn't it, when that happens as well? Some people are afraid of flying in airplanes. Anyone here afraid of flying in airplanes? A few people. Um, if, if you looked out your window and you saw someone fixing the plane with duct tape like this person, 
You would be afraid of flying. Some people are afraid of horses. This poor fella is pretty afraid of a horse <laughs> sticking his head in the window. Some people are even afraid of budgies, little birds even. Some people are afraid of as well. You know, the reality is that we are all afraid of different things at different times. Sometimes we can feel afraid, kids, about maybe an exam or a test we have to do at school. Sometimes we can feel afraid that maybe uh, our friends are going to leave us out or we're not going to have anyone to sit with or someone to talk to. But the good news is this, that Jesus tells us that we don't need to be afraid because we can trust him and he promises to always be with us. This is really good news. And Peter, he was full of courageous faith when he stepped out of that boat and he was able to walk on the water. Wasn't that an amazing miracle that he was able to do that? But then Peter did something. He took his eyes off Jesus and he looked instead at the wind and the waves around him. And in that moment, he started to fear. He started to become afraid and he started to sink. And it's actually exactly the same in our own lives. Uh, I actually brought something with me today. I actually brought with me a ball. It's a handball. And uh, it's, uh, who likes playing handball? Any of the kids here? I oh, know, how good is handball? What's one of the most important rules when you play handball? It is to make sure that you keep your eye on the ball if you want to play well in the game of handball. And it's the same in our lives as well. What we focus on is actually really important. If we focus on our problems rather than the power of God, then we can easily become overcome with fear. If we focus on our fears rather than fixing our eyes on Jesus, we can find ourselves being overwhelmed and sinking in that situation. And so Jesus tells us, he says that he wants us to keep our eyes fixed on him. Hebrews 12 verse 2 actually says to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And he promises as we do that to give us his peace and his power. And I love in this story because Peter prays, as he's sinking in the waves, he prays the shortest prayer in the whole Bible. I don't know if you realize this, but this is actually the shortest prayer in the Bible. It's just three words, and his prayer is this. He simply prayed, Lord, save me. What a great prayer, a simple prayer, just three words, Lord, save me. And sometimes we think, I'm not sure if I have the words to pray. I'm not sure if God's going to hear me. When I pray, but Peter prays this simple prayer, Lord, save me. And immediately in that moment, Jesus reaches down, rescues Peter, pulls him to safety, and experiences the presence, the peace, the power of God in his own life. And it's the same in our lives as well. We can pray to him at any time, any place. We don't have to have special words. It just needs to be a prayer from our hearts. Lord, save me. And in that moment, God promises immediately to answer that prayer, to respond to us, to rescue us, to save us, to redeem us. And that is the good news of the story of the Bible. That is the good news of the message of Jesus' love for us, that through faith in Jesus and what he has done for us on the cross, we no longer need to fear. That is really good news. Did you know that the the, the phrase, do not be afraid, appears in the Bible 365 times. That is one for every single day of the year. That is how much God wants us to know this truth in our own hearts. One of my favorite verses in the Bible comes from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says this. It says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. What a great verse of scripture. And that is exactly what Peter experienced in in his life, wasn't it? When Jesus reached down, took him by the hand, and rescued him. And Jesus wants us to know this truth in our lives as well. And if you are here today... And perhaps you are feeling overwhelmed by the fear of the future. Or maybe you are feeling weighed down by the worries of today. This message is for you, for kids here this morning, for adults as well, for every single one of us. This is God's heart, that we wouldn't live with fear and worry in our lives, but instead we would understand all that Jesus has done for us. And that when we know this truth, know that we can trust him, know his power and his peace in our lives. We can know freedom from fear 
And what a blessing, what good news it is to be able to know this in our own lives. Can anyone remember the memory verse that we did this morning? Why don't we do that memory verse one more time together? It's going to come up on the screen behind. Are you ready to say it together? Let's all say it. One big voice on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. What great news to know. I'm going to pray. Ask God's blessing for everyone here. Let me pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love for us. We thank you, Lord, that you long for us to know this truth, that you love us, that you are with us, that you are for us, that you sent Jesus into this world, that we might have the assurance of eternal life in you. And because of this, we no longer have to fear. I pray for any here this morning who maybe are feeling weighed down with the worries of this life, fear of the future, Lord, that right now by your Holy Spirit, you would draw near, that you would assure them that you love them, care about them, are with them, Lord. Thank you for that simple prayer, Lord, save me, Lord. What a great prayer for each and every person to pray as we express our faith and trust in you this morning. We pray all these things, and Lord, I ask for your blessing, and all the kids here this morning, uh, and families as well, Lord. We give you thanks, and we pray your blessing now in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. We are going to sing one last song as we finish our service today. I'm going to invite, I think the worship band are going to come back up, and we're going to sing that song we sang at the very start, This Is Living. Why don't we all jump on our feet as we sing our final song this morning. Give thanks to God for all the blessings that are found in Him. Let's do that. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We have had the best time with you. Please don't rush off. Stay, say hi to each other. There's a welcome lounge if you're new today. Grab a coffee, meet some people. Um, but have a great day and hopefully we'll see you next week. <laughs>